Well, 2020 is just about over, so it's time for the top 10 4K list. All right, so you know the rules. The list is gonna be based on audio and video quality as a whole. So it's not just about what looks the best, it's gotta look and sound good, the complete package. It's also not based on how good the movie is story-wise. It could be a horrible movie, but look and sound fantastic. This also being a 4K list, the titles have gotta be 4K, obviously, right? We're not gonna be counting DVDs or Blu-rays. The audio has also gotta be in the best audio formats available right now, which is Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. Five channel or seven channel mix won't count. With that being said, be sure to tap the subscribe button if you haven't already. In at number 10 is Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. We gave this one an 8.9 for audio and an 8.5 for video. It was shot on 35 millimeter and it's got a 4K DI. This is a worthy upgrade over the standard Blu-ray and follows The Force Awakens as far as color fidelity and brightness. It's not the sharpest, most detailed movie on the list, hence being in at number 10, but it's got that cinematic filmic look with very good details from digital and practical effects. HDR also has a nice wide color palette with specular highlights that can get eye-poppingly bright. Black levels are solid with visible shadow detail, and overall, it's a fairly bright HDR transfer. The Dolby Atmos mix has some demo-worthy bass right from the get-go, and the aerial battles will give you some good immersion through all your speakers. It does need a twist on the volume knob to get things up to normal, but once you get things dialed in, the John Williams score is a real treat. When you think of a Star Wars movie, you think of a big, huge soundstage, spaceships zipping through every speaker, and lightsabers clashing. The Rise of Skywalker gives you all that. In at number 9 is The New Mutants. This one got an 8.6 for audio and a 9 for video. It was shot in 8K and it's got a 4K DI. I wasn't expecting much from this, but I was pleasantly surprised. Detail can be uncomfortably detailed. Just look at Ray's clawed up face. I mean, it was shot in 8K, so you can expect some crispiness. It's also grain free for all the grain haters out there. HDR kept the bright scenes bright while keeping shadow detail from being crushed in the dark ones. This is a really dark movie. There are some bright specular highlights that do pop, but don't go expecting too much vivid color. As I said, it's a dark movie. Audio is in Dolby Atmos, with the majority of the surround effects coming from ambiance in the lower channels. There is some excellent height channel usage in the opening chapter, and the final chapter with the demon bear fight was a real highlight. There's effects swirling in every speaker, and the bass response here can dig impressively low. Like I said, I wasn't expecting too much, but as it turns out, it was a great 4K transfer. Coming in at number 8 is The Call of the Wild. We gave this an 8.4 for audio and a 9.3 for video. This was shot in 6.5K and it's also got a 4K DI. It's just 4K crisp and most definitely one of the cleanest transfers on this list. Detail from close-ups were flawless and so was the background scenery. The dog, even though I felt it was too cartoony, was rendered impressively as well. There are actually a few scenes where you might think it was a real dog. HDR I thought was on the slightly dimmer side, but the color palette was natural with black levels that increased the image depth. The audio is in Dolby Atmos, which gives the movie a large atmospheric soundstage. Since it takes place outside, you do get that open airy sensation. High channels kick into full gear during the avalanche, and bass response does dig pretty darn low. If you're a fan of the crisp, then this movie's it. Next up at number 7 is Bad Boys for Life. This one got an 8 for audio and a 9.8 for video. Ooh. It was shot in 2.8K and it's got a 2K DI. Who said a movie with a 2K DI can't look good? Keeping with the crispy transfers, this one is right at the top. It's got detail for days and the HDR is of the eye blinding variety. It's got that warm color palette with super hot highlights and extremely contrasty black levels. It's a bright HDR transfer overall, so if you want to show off how colorful your display can get, then this movie should be in the collection. The audio is in DTS-X with a few standout scenes. The helicopter crash at the end is one of the coolest parts when it comes crashing down from the high channels, and there's good lower channel movement from the shootout, and there's always some ambiance filling in the lower speakers. Bass response was decent, but I thought there'd be more. But it is a fun watch, and again, if you like a clean, crispy transfer, Bad Boys for Life is gonna do it for you. In at number six is Joker. This one got an 8.4 for audio and a 9.6 for video. It was shot in 3.4, 4.5, and 5.8K with a 4K DI. Now this is just an amazingly filmic looking movie. Despite being shot all digitally, it does look like it was shot on film. 
It doesn't quite have that razor sharpness as the previous two on the list, but it's not too far off. Detail is still finely rendered, costumes have a very tangible textural appearance, and of course, close-ups are nearly perfect. HDR's wider color elevates the many darker shades throughout the film and keeps the lower level details intact. It's not a bright or a colorful movie, but it does have some nice splashes of color here and there. The audio mix is in Dolby Atmos, with the best aspect being the musical score. It has a big cinematic presence with an instrumentally detailed rich soundstage. High channel activity was light for the most part, except for maybe the subway scene. It's got some nice ambiance that elevates the moodiness of the film, which in turn enhances the moody visuals. This is a great looking movie and well worth a watch. Coming in at number 5 is Midway. We gave this a 10 for audio and an 8.1 for video. This movie was shot in 8K and it's got a 2K DI. Now just like the Joker, this was shot digitally, but they went in and added some film grain to give it a more vintage appearance. So if you're a grain hater, then you might not like the way this movie looks. Still, there's great detail throughout, it just isn't razor sharp. It is, however, a nice upgrade over the regular Blu-ray. HDR does add some extra brightness to the image, and specular highlights can get blindingly bright from all the explosions. It's got some softer color tones, so nothing really punchy and vivid. It goes along with having that vintage look. Audio is in Dolby Atmos, and I believe this might be the only 10 we gave out this year for sound. When the aerial battles take place, it'll light up every one of your speakers. You'll hear planes flying in every direction, high channels, lower channels, and every space in between. It'll sound like you got speakers in places you don't. When things go boom and explode, your teeth might rattle out of your mouth. There's so much bass. It's not only got big visuals, it's got an equally big sound mix as well. I think I've used this movie in almost every subwoofer review I've done this year. If you need a movie to test your home theater, then this one needs to be in the collection. In at number 4 is Terminator Dark Fate. We gave this a 9.5 for audio and an 8.7 for video. It was shot in 4.5K with a 4K DI. This movie's got some impressive looking details for sure. Have you seen how good those wrinkles look? And Arnie's face has never looked so good half blown off. It's bloody and it's gooey and it's just 4K nice. The CGI, however, can be hit and miss. Sometimes it looks awesome and other times it just doesn't look good. HDR usage bumps up the brightness and makes the half dozen explosions jump off the screen. It's got a warm color palette with a nice saturation throughout. Black levels are deep and contrasty without any noticeable crushing. The audio mix is in Dolby Atmos and it's right there behind Midway for immersive goodness. That airplane scene will have your height channels working overtime and the car chase will have you dodging cars in the lower channels. Bass response is demo worthy and makes this movie worth it for the sound mix alone. Whether or not you'll actually like the movie, that's another story. Next up at number 3 is Bloodshot. This one gets a 9.4 for audio and an 8.9 for video. It was shot in 7K with a 4K DI. This is one of those clean 4K transfers from Sony. It's got some very fine detail and it's grain free for the grain haters. I did find some shots were very crisp and other shots were noticeably soft. Same goes for the CGI. Dom's face getting blown off was pretty damn cool, but then the fight towards the end looked like some amateur CG. HDR gives this movie some nice pop with some very deep reds and blacks, and shadow detail remained intact. The shootout in the tunnel can get blindingly bright, so specular highlights do have impressive pop. The audio is in Dolby Atmos, and it can be an aggressive mix, the tunnel scene being one of the most memorable. High channels are used often during all the big action scenes, and during the quieter parts, there's always ambiance that fills in all the speakers. Bass response now can dig really low and hit really hard. That scene once again in the tunnel, demo worthy. Bloodshot might not be the best movie on the list, but it's got one of the best audio mixes. In at number 2 is The Invisible Man. We gave this a 9.4 for audio and an 8.9 for video. It was shot in 4.5K and it's got a 4K DI. I know this and Bloodshot got the same ratings, so you could flip these around, number 2 and number 3. Either way, this is still one great looking, clean 4K transfer. It's got tons of little nuanced details, especially during those close-ups. Sometimes it can be a little too good. You can even clearly see all those small individual cameras all over the suit. Now this is a dark movie, so having HDR in hand does help to keep the shadow details. Black levels are deep, giving the image a contrasty look, although at times I did feel some of the blacks were raised, so they lean more on the grayer side. As I said, it is a very dark movie with a lot of blacks and cooler tones, so you won't get any vivid splashes of color. It's all about the mood and the atmosphere in this one. You will, however, get some nice specular highlights from lights and reflective surfaces. Not a ton, but they're there. 
The audio is in Dolby Atmos, and much like the atmospheric visuals, the audio immerses you in ambiance from all directions. Now this isn't a big action flick packed with explosions and airplanes zipping through different speakers. It's built mainly around subtle effects that enhances the tension. It's a cleverly placed sound in the back or maybe the HVAC turning on overhead that creates a convincing real world atmosphere. Bass response digs surprisingly low during the kitchen fight and will give your subwoofers a healthy workout. I think if you want to watch something that doesn't go overboard with big bombastic explosions and sounds more like real life, then The Invisible Man should be on the list. And topping the list at number one is 1917. We gave this an 8.7 for audio and a 9.8 for video. It was shot in 4.5K with a 4K DI. You know, I totally forgot about this movie when I did my mid-year list. So it probably would have been number one too. Anyways, this is just one awesome detail rich movie. Everything from blades of grass, dirt and debris, strands of hair, pretty much everything looked amazing. The only thing that was suspect is gonna have to be the digital rats. As for the look of the film, it's not exactly a very colorful one. It's mostly earthy tones, so a lot of browns, greens, and beige. HDR does help to keep the color transition smooth, but again, nothing I think is gonna wow you with bold HDR colors, except for maybe the background in chapter 12. There are some decent specular highlights from explosions and flames, but nothing too crazy. The audio is in Dolby Atmos, and I thought it was really good for a wartime film. I did go into this expecting Hacksaw Ridge levels of immersiveness, but that wasn't the case. Still, there was good ambiance during the downtime moments, and surround activity does pick up when things get all chaotic. High channels come alive towards the end when the explosions start going off, and the subwoofers get a little workout here as well. I did think the bass response could have dug in a bit more though, but still, it was good when it was called for. The soundstage has a big cinematic feel, which does match the visuals, and I felt the musical score was the best part of this mix, as it is pretty detailed. I think if you want to show off how great and detail rich a 4K transfer can look and sound, then this should probably already be in your list. Now I do have two honorable mentions. Since this list was based on all the titles being in 4K with an immersive soundtrack, that would of course exclude certain movies. Now if Tenet had an Atmos or DTS-X mix, then I'm sure it'd be at the top of the list. Unfortunately, it only had a 5.1 mix, but the video quality was outstanding and it does have those IMAX shots for those that like the switching aspect ratios. My second honorable mention is a catalog title. All the movies on the top 10 list were recently shot films, so I didn't include any older stuff. Now you might disagree with this one, but 300 would be my second honorable mention. Yes, it's intentionally grainy and it's overblown and it's crushed, but it was designed to be that way and I think it looks awesome. Truly a comic book movie come to life. And let's not forget the new Atmos mix. It is one of the most aggressively immersive mixes on the list and the base is straight demo worthy material. If you want a kick-ass home theater catalog title without any over sharpening or DNR, then 300 is a must own. So that's it. That's the list for 2020. You guys tell me what's on your list for the best looking and sounding 4Ks of the year. Leave a comment and let us know. Now, if you want to grab anything in this video, I'll leave links for all the movies in the video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.